Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. So today I want to talk about dinguses, specifically this guy. This is a duplexer by the label. I think it's a diplexer, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to take a look at what this looks like on a spectrum analyzer and go over a few of the main differences between a duplexer and a diplexer even though I think this is labeled wrong. Stick with me. So the basic definition of a duplexer is to split up inbound and outbound signals into two separate destinations. For example, a repeater. So you have a duplexer that splits the outbound radio signals away from the inbound radio signals, even though they're using the same antenna. That is the common definition of duplexer according to multiple sources. So I'm going to go with that one. On a diplexer, which is what I think this is, a diplexer, first of all, is two-way. And it lets you split sources and destinations however you want to by frequency. A duplexer splits by direction, right? Transmitted versus received. On a diplexer, it lets you split up inbound and outbound signals, however you want to do it, but it splits them by frequency. So for example, depending on the model you buy, and I've got a couple of examples. I have one here in front of me that we're going to look at on the spectrum analyzer, but there are various, various models of these things. And what they do is they split apart your signal into different frequency bands, different pass bands, essentially. So for example, this one is a model CF530 by Comet, and this is split into 1.3 to 90 megahertz on one of the connectors, and then it's split into 125 to 470 on the other connector. I have another one, which I don't have out. It's actually hooked up to a radio where I can't get at it easy. It's split up into three separate connections, and it lets me split out two meters, 440, and 1.2 gigahertz. So that's the, the triplexer, actually, that I have on my 9700. So that I'm using one antenna, and in the case of the 9700, it's on a very, very wide banded disc cone. And the 9700, for example, has three antenna connections on the back of it, two meter, 440, and 1.2 gigahertz. So using that super wide banded disc cone and a triplexer, I can hook up all three ports on that 9700 and use it with the one antenna, which is designed to receive and transmit on multiple bands across that spectrum, whatever the spectrum is. I, I don't remember specifically for that antenna off the top of my head, but it's very wide banded. So duplexer splits the signals by direction. Diplexer splits the signals by frequency bands. And then the same would apply for something like a triplexer or a quadplexer, et cetera, et cetera. And while I don't have anything fancier than a triplexer, I'm pretty sure there are quads and maybe even more than that. So that is the basic definition of duplexer versus diplexer. And I've noticed that those two words get thrown around interchangeably. So there you go. The more you know, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the improperly labeled Comet duplexer, which is really a diplexer. And we're going to hook it up to the spectrum analyzer. And what we should see is very clear pass bands on the two different ranges. So we'll test one, one range at once, and then we'll test the other range. And we should see our frequencies rise and fall off as we see that pass band for that particular leg of this device. What is the use case for something like the CF530, this particular device here? And the question is, can you use multiple radios and, or multiple antennas with it? And the answer is yes, either way. So the way I have used this exact one is on my Kenwood TS2000. It has two HF connections and a two meter connection. And I can't remember, it may have a separate one for 440. I didn't use 440 at the time. But when I was at Huntsville, at the Huntsville Ham Fest, we were staying up on the mountain and a bunch of us were up there doing POTA. So I had my Kenwood set up with the HF side connected to HF and the two meter 440 side connected to the two meter connector on the back of the radio. 
allowing me to use one antenna. I use the Coffee and Ham Radio's Poseidon vertical antenna, which works perfectly fine on two meters, especially if you're not going very far anyway. Hell, I'm on top of a mountain. It worked great. So I had one radio, shack in a box kind of radio, doing HF and 440, or two meters, excuse me, off of exactly one antenna. Now the other question is, can I use this the other way? And the answer is absolutely yes. This particular device is rated for 60 dB of um, separation, of attenuation between the two ports. So you could have one antenna like I had, but instead of one radio with two connectors, you could have two separate radios. So you could have a two meter 440 dual bander on one connector and your HF rig on the other. So you could have two radios utilizing the same antenna. In the case I mentioned, something like the car Poseidon would work absolutely fine with a device like this. These devices, duplex, diplexers, excuse me, I caught myself, diplexers are, are bidirectional. Unless specifically stated that they're not, they are, it's the way they work. The difference is the filters for one connector versus the filtering for the other connector. You can use them either way. Multiple radios in, one antenna out, or one radio in to multiple antennas out, either way. So let's jump over to the spectrum analyzer and take a quick look. Okay, so let me run over our setup real quick. Very basic setup here for this. What we're gonna do is hook up each of the different band connectors here, right? Each of them to the input port, and then we're gonna do a sweep and see where the fall off on those frequencies are exactly according to the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so here, what we've got set up, as you can see up here, is we're sweeping the first connector, which according to the device is 1.3 to 90 megahertz. And if you look at this sweep, which I ran from one megahertz up to 125, you can see clearly that our frequency starts to roll off. Our, our output power starts to get attenuated as we climb in frequency. We could find the point where this is 3 dB below, and it's gonna be somewhere right about here. I could set it up on here, but trust me on that one. And then you can see the power clearly rolls off. If we expand the frequency range on this, and start rolling this outwards, what you'll see as that increases is that it's pretty much really dropping it down. This particular line right here is 9 dB down, so right about there is 3 dB, which is pretty much isolation, generally as bandpass filters go. And that's what this device is. It's a fancy bandpass filter with two physical paths that pass two separate bands, as you will. And so if I roll this out all the way, and we're up to 300 megahertz total span now, and you can see here that we ain't got nothing. Once we get past, once we get past that top end of this thing on this particular piece of the, let's go back and reset that. And we're gonna go to frequency, and we're gonna start at one, megahertz and we're gonna stop at 125 megahertz. And what you can see here is, again, this, this first line below is, is minus nine dB. So about a third of the way there's minus three dB. And you can clearly tell that once we get past that, this filter never allows anything to go back up. And indeed the roll off on it just keeps going down until it's somewhere around 40 to 60 dB below the pass band of this particular filter. So let's check the other side. It should be different yet the same. Stick with me. Okay, so we've got it hooked up on the other leg and according to the device, this is 125 to 470 megahertz is the, the pass band for this bandpass filter. Okay, well, I wasn't exactly expecting these results, but here they are. And the new trace is on the screen here. And this is not exactly what I expected. It's not terrible, but it's not what I expected on this device. So the device says that it's good from 125 to 470. That's where the, the second pass band is on this device. And looking at the screen here, we're sweeping from 100 megahertz up to 548 megahertz. So we should clearly see two shoulders where the frequency starts to come back up from where it was, where it was attenuated, 
we should see our pass band, and then we should see another shoulder going down where the attenuation comes back. And they didn't do that here. Um, it gets a little squirrely, but it doesn't look like it's going down at all. And indeed, so if you look here at the stop frequency right here, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn that off, but I'm going to roll the knob. So we're going to increase our stop frequency. So we're sweeping from 100 megahertz on up. All right. And as we do this, if you look down here in the bottom corner, you can see our stop or you can see our stop right there. And as I'm rolling the knob here, we're scanning out farther and farther, still starting at 100 megahertz. And there's no appreciable attenuation, uh, maybe one and a half dB or so. We're getting down to almost three dB up here at the end, which is right around. Yeah. Okay. So it's just not as marked. That's 450. And when we, when we hit 470, then we're dropping down. As you can see right there, we're dropping down to a, about minus three dB, so that's it. It's just not, it's not as dramatic as the drop over here where we started the pass band. So there's our minus three dB there at four, or what, at 846 actually. And then a little weird dip. And this is our stop frequency. This is what we're looking at here. And then it drops down to about minus nine dB. And then back up as we cross the gigahertz boundary. And then another dip, a large dip. And, you know, we're up to 1.3 gigahertz. So it does the thing. It does the thing. But there isn't a, a roll off really on the shoulder on the, on the upper side of the um, 70 centimeter band where the device says there is. It will filter out everything below that, but it's not going to filter out everything above that if your radio cared. Guys, that's going to be all I'll have for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I will put links, they will be Amazon affiliate links, in the description below of the different diplexers I have. And keep in mind, the main point that I wanted to share with you is what you see here, that it's a fancy bandpass filter but also the difference between diplexers and duplexers. Guys, thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. 73.